Hello, everyone. I am Ken O'Neill, and this is Commissioner's Corner. And today we are speaking with Andrew Starkey, the Palm Springs Power Baseball Organization chief and founder. And uh, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. Now, the difference between, uh, explain the Palm Springs Power Baseball Organization, how long it's been in operation, and uh, the uh, Palm Springs Collegiate League and how that has all come to pass. Well, the, Pal the Palm Springs Power Baseball Organization has been in existence for going on 16 full years now. We run a franchise called the Palm Springs Power, and two years ago, we started the Palm Springs Collegiate League. Uh, and we run it out of our Palm Springs Stadium in Palm Springs, California. Now, uh, many leagues play 40 games and so forth. You only play 25. How did you figure out the 25? Well, we, I, let me take a step back. Myself being a former college baseball player, I know that sometimes summer vacation can get cut short and players have a lot of objectives over the summer. They want to play, they want to get stronger, and they want to get faster, develop physically, mentally. They also want a little bit of a break. They've been going strong since the beginning of January, and once they get back on campus, it's all over again with their training. So what our objective is, and we have the luxury of sunshine, 360 days a year in Palm Springs, is to condense 25 games into a very short period of time, where players are playing baseball five to six days a week here, there's no travel and there's no real risk of a rain out or inclement weather. So the players can play here all the time. And then once the season comes to an end, it gives them the opportunity to have a little bit of decompression time before they either one have to go back to campus or and have school start or, you know, some players do have to go back on the quarter system for summer classes at the very beginning of August. Now, when you started this, uh, you're only 23 years old. And so right now, I mean, you're very young right now. How did you start that all? Well, I'm 39 now and some quick math, but uh, I played college baseball. After I graduated from college, I worked for the uh, University of Central Florida in their athletic department. I also worked for the Orlando Magic. And I had uh, met a couple people working backstage at a Magic game. They were starting a summer collegiate franchise in Long Beach, California. Uh, long story short, they gave me a job opportunity, and I figured it's an adventure. Come to California, I worked for them for six months, and then after six months, I decided two things. One, I wanted to stay in California, but two, I didn't want to work for them, and I wanted to start my own organization. So I went around to different communities, looked at different facilities and markets. Um, when I came to Palm Springs, I fell in love with the community, the facility, and I felt this would be a great place to put a flag in the ground and start an organization that really could thrive. We have our own media market with a half a million people. It's uh, just on the outskirts of Los Angeles. So it's a wonderful place with great weather. And uh, we've had a lot of success uh, in the sports world uh, here in Palm Springs. Now, how do you uh, get your um, the people to come and play for you? Because some of the uh, leagues, uh, 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 some of them do local uh, recruiting, others do national. How do you recruit your players? Yes, we do all of it. We have players that are local, that come from our local junior college or local high schools that come out here. We have players that are from the Southern California Basin that are aware of us. And they have family and friends that have places out here that they want to come and stay. But we also do national and international uh, recruiting through uh, college baseball coaches, um, other online platforms, and all the different ways that people get their message out to potential players and coaches. We actually have players from, I believe it is six different countries, including uh, Canada, uh, Taiwan, uh, Japan, Korea, or South Korea, uh, and even China coming out here to play in, I think even Australia. So maybe not China, but maybe Australia is uh, the other one uh, in addition to the United States. So we, we reach out to different players and we reach out to different contacts who have players, coaches, agents, um, scouts that are trying to help players find the right playing experience for them. And one thing that we guarantee players is they're going to get playing time. It's not going to be a best man plays in the Palm Springs Collegiate League for 
the duration of the regular season, everyone's going to get playing time, but players do have to be qualified to uh, join the league. Now, how do you handle the pitching situations? Uh, I was just watching the Cubs, for instance, and the, and the uh, Milwaukee Brewers, and they were talking about how, well, they only have seven relievers instead of eight relievers. And, and they're essentially pitching one inning, and that's all they're doing. How does your uh, league handle the pitching? Is there a pitch count? Is there anything along those lines? Well, each, play, each pitcher is a little bit different. Some pitchers uh, that threw more in the spring – they don't need as many innings and they don't want as many innings because they don't want the wear and tear on their arms. Other pitchers, they might have redshirted or just not thrown as much and utilized as much. So they, they and their coaches want them to throw as much as they possibly can within reason. So between our four athletic trainers, our pitching coordinator, each team's manager, and our uh, field coordinator, we make sure that we're working with each pitcher to make sure they get the appropriate amount of innings um, so that they can have the, the best experience. So some pitchers are on a pitch count. Others are not, that they are trying to build up and throw longer and go deeper. And when that's the case, some pitchers, if they're having a tough inning, we give them the opportunity to work through it. There's not a quick hook on certain pitchers because their coaches at their colleges and universities want them to learn how to pitch through a little bit of adversity to get to the other side so it can ultimately help their program come next fall and spring. Now, I understand that uh, you have a uh, Palm Springs Stadium, and uh, it goes all the way back to 1949. How, is, how, how are the stadiums and how are the, where they play? How does that uh, – uh, are people coming because they, want to, they, they can play in these California cities? Well, the reality is, and a huge advantage for our league, is everything is right here on our complex. We are located uh, within a park, a large park facility in the city of Palm Springs, and Palm Springs Stadium is the central focus point, where we have locker rooms, training facilities uh, right here. Uh, so we'll play two games a day with 200-plus players in our league divided onto 10 teams. We have about 21, 22-man rosters. So we will play, of the 10 teams, eight teams will play each day. We have two games and four teams playing on the stadium, and then we have two teams, or two games and four teams playing on our uh, auxiliary field, which is a turf infield, turf mound, grass outfield. Then we also have the luxury of Palm Springs High School's varsity field, which is a very well-maintained um, high school facility that we do practices on each and every day for our, for our teams that are playing and players that want to get some additional infield, outfield, uh, positional work. So we're doing workouts on three different fields. So the advantage of players not having to drive all over Kingdom Come or get on a bus and ride all over the Midwest um, really plays an advantage for our athletes coming here to Palm Springs. And then we lodge all of them right in the middle of downtown Palm Springs. So they're less, they live, they almost all live within a mile of the stadium and then we have a gym facility at EOS Fitness where all the players, which is about a half mile away, humongous, I want to say that place is 70,000 square feet of a uh, two-story workout facility for all of our athletes to use. So we can be a one-stop shop for all of our players to have a great summer baseball and training experience. Now, uh, for this year, how do the teams stack up? Is there one team that's got a big advantage? And is there any players that you might want to discuss about how they're playing and what their future would be like? Truth be told, I don't know all the players. It's a little premature to um, say that one team is going to run away with it and not. My objective um, as the league commissioner is to have as much parity in the league as possible so that when we are putting the teams together, because when the players register, for the most part, they're registering to be a part of the league. When they know a college coach that's going to be coaching or managing in our league, they certainly can register to participate on their team. But we want it to be a very competitive, even balanced league, and we don't want to have too many positional players I don't want to have a team of four first basemen or five catchers. That doesn't work. So we balance it out nicely uh, for the teams. Uh, I can't tell you who the best player is because it's so early in the season. I can tell you in our first year, last year, 
with only six teams um, and about 140 players in the league, we had two players drafted in this year's Major League Baseball draft. And looking at next year and looking at the talent pool we have, I can only hope and think that we will have even more players draft in the 2020 uh, Major League Baseball draft. Can I ask you uh, briefly about your association with the Phillies? You're a scout. The reason I bring that up is uh, many years ago, I sat in uh, the Rochester's stadium in Rochester, New York, and I sat next to a Philly scout who gave me a, 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 a sheet of paper that they go by and how they uh, associate and how they pick the players and all of that. And I'm wondering if you have, if you do something along those lines. I do. Um, I, am, I am not an area scout or a cross-checker or a high-level scout. I am what is considered an associate scout, which essentially means I'm a bird dog. And the point being that my area scout, Mike Garcia, that I have worked with for about a decade now, he covers from the, roughly the San Diego area all the way up to Las Vegas. And lucky enough, in the last, I believe it's two years, to have the Philadelphia Phillies first overall draft pick um, on his roster. So he is a very well-respected uh, scout within the Phillies organization. But because I see so many players come through our organization and Palm Springs Stadium, I'm a great asset, I believe, uh, to Mike and the Phillies organization. Now, my loyalty to the Phillies, I do have that. However, if Mike doesn't see what I see or the Philadelphia Phillies organization does not have the um, desire or uh, ability to take a player, select a player, sign a player, then my, that's where my loyalties will end. And I, my loyalties continue with our athletes to help them find the, another organization that has interest in them. Not only am I an associate scout, also our field coordinator for the uh, Palm Springs Collegiate League, Casey Dill, is an associate scout with the Atlanta Braves, um, some of our managers fill those roles, and there are lots of people throughout the country that fill those roles for major league organizations, and I have been uh, lucky enough that Mike has followed uh, some of my recommendations and followed the players, and the Philadelphia Phillies organization has uh, taken the opportunity to bring them into their organization. Some have worked, some haven't, but, uh, you know, I see a lot of ball players with our collegiate league, what we do in the wintertime, what we do with our power franchise, that I'm able to provide a lot of information to the Philadelphia Phillies and or other organizations throughout Major League Baseball and independent professional baseball. And when Palm Springs gets their Major League franchise, you'll be right there. You know what? God, <laughs> crypto rise. I hope that that day is coming soon. Well, listen, give, give us a final uh, uh, something about the league and uh, so forth as a final thing for your league. Well, the Palm Springs Collegiate League, while it's only in its second year, is a part of a much bigger organization that's been in business for 16 years. So when a player, a family, a coach out is looking to help a player's development, I think there's no finer league that a player can come to that will guarantee them playing time, a competitive atmosphere, and obviously the beauty of Southern California's. Uh, there are scheduled off days, so players can enjoy themselves out here and head out to Los Angeles and see Dodger Stadium or San Diego or, heck, they can even go to Huntington Beach and see the U.S. Open of surfing. There are so many wonderful things that California and Southern California has to offer that this is the best place for a college athlete to come out, play summer baseball, develop, but not overwork themselves like some other leagues can do and have their batteries recharged so that when they're back on campus in uh, early to mid-August, they are ready to go and physically, mentally um, prepared for the upcoming year. Well, let me uh, tell everybody that we're speaking with Andrew Starkey, the Palm Springs Power Baseball Organization uh, president and the Palm Springs Collegiate League. Thank you for, very much for being with us and hopefully we will talk to you down the road. Hey, I appreciate it. Hopefully you and some of your uh, viewers will check us out on our social media, learn a little bit more about us, and give us an opportunity to discuss with them uh, how their athletes are going to spend their summer in uh, 2020. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Ken O'Neill, and we will see you the next time. <laughs>